Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is Takeshi's Challenge. John Tron by the channel John Tron Show. John plays the infamous Takeshi's Challenge, the game made by famous Japanese actor Beat Takeshi. His name is Beat Takeshi. Is that it? Damn. Okay, so I guess this is a game review, but it's pretty famous on his channel. So I don't know. It must be something. Yeah, John Tron is an awesome channel. I love all the topics. He started as a game reviewer, but then he just, you know, I guess branched out to anything, right? Anything that is just fucking hilarious to, I guess, you know, to cover that, you know, he reviews it. So, yeah. I love this channel because all the memes and shit is just awesome, right? The way he edits st shit and, the, you know, the level of effort he puts in it because every time there is some kind of a, you know, uh, he, he wears some costumes sometimes for a small joke here and there. He goes to a specific location just for a joke that is just awesome so let's watch this one Jumptron Throughout history, mankind has faced challenges far and wide, building the Great Wall of China, combating worldwide plagues, and even escaping our own atmosphere to brave the perilous journey to the infinite. But there are some challenges that were just never meant to be faced. Some peaks too monumental, some chasms too great. It's this. This bravery. And then there's just plain stupidity. But mankind doesn't get anywhere by playing it smart. Some of us have to be the guinea pigs, do the work no one else wants to. And that's why I'm going where no man has ever gone before and come back to tell the tale. Mission briefing. Subject, Takeshi Kitano, otherwise known as Beat Takeshi. Japanese film director, okay. comedian, singer, actor, author, screenwriter, poet, painter. Okay, what wasn't this guy? And one time video game designer. Yeah, you hear that? One time, because one time was all he needed. After that, the seafloor split open and swallowed the Caribbean. Earthquakes ravaged the West oh, Coast of America. And goblins were still really, really scary. Ew, I like them. I like goblins. Although being more comfortable with directing and acting, Beat Takeshi was never one to back down from a new art form. So when Taito Corporation asked him to lend his name to their new video game, instead of simply saying yes and taking the money, he chose to be directly involved with the creation of the game. He even starred in two Japanese commercials advertising the game. Perplexingly enough, both of these commercials were actually cryptic hints on how to complete difficult parts of the game. And then, this. Like Aphrodite rising from the sea foam of Uranus's severed ball sack. No, I'm serious. That's how it happened. Look it up. I, it's, it's true. It's definitely true. Takeshi Kitano cut from the balls of Taito and released this to the masses. This is universally referred to as one of the worst ranking and hardest video games of all time. And it's only known as Takeshi's Challenge. That God is in the us. name. Why'd you wanna sit far away? Look at the very same image a thousand Japanese kids saw on Christmas morning 1986. Put your mind into theirs. Feel the pain. Feel the anger. And now first off, I just want to say there's a password guard in front of this password screen here, and you can just punch him and get a game over. Before you even play the game. Game over? I think there has to be a game first for it to be over. Maybe they're talking about the game of life. The game opens up with you getting yelled at in your boss's office, literally. You don't even get fired, it's not concrete, you're just being reprimanded for your mediocrity. Oh yeah? You're gonna yell at me? Well this is a video game, I can do what I want! Oh, Merry Christmas Japan 1986. Oh my god. Why would I try to escape real life by playing a game that's more depressing than real life? Am I supposed to feel good by comparison? Well at the very least I can say this- No, no, no. What do you want? Sign resignation, take a sick day, take a vacation, all, you know, understandable. Punch your manager. What is that? Flatter him? Oh, okay, flatter him. I don't know, what the fuck. Punch your manager? That's something, I'll, you know what? This is ridiculous, but I also like that. Because anytime a game has ridiculous amount of freedom that doesn't even make sense, it's always awesome. Like, punch your manager, because why, you know, you explain to me why you want to do that, but I guess you can't do that. 
Sing <laughs> than real life. Am I supposed to feel good by comparison? Well, at the very least, I can say this game was innovative for its time. It's open-ended and has heavy real-life themes, which most concurrent games had little of, if any. But perhaps it's a bit too open-ended. Where am I supposed to go? The bank? The culture club? Grilled Mormon? Mo Mormons? Oh, what's going on? Oh, God, I didn't know it was all right to eat those guys. I be better should check the bro bowl. Make, make sure that's okay. Well, I already have no idea what to do. So I guess I'll do so what I always you do when I'm lost. Drink heavily. Lots of drinks. Way absolutely above the margin of necessary. Mom is scared. Huh. It's pitch black? Wait, where am I? Is this woman beating up on me? What's going on? My home. What? Well, this explains quite a bit. So you talk to your wife, and your options are food, a bath, let's go to bed, I want to travel, and I want a divorce. <laughs> this is a video game from the 80s. Keep in mind, at this point, most games look like this, or, or this. They didn't usually have themes of domestic conflict in them, and they still don't, really. Let's give her the good old one-two divorce and see what happens. I mean, after all, she is violent. So you can pay alimony or punch. 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 You know, whenever I find myself in this situation, I find that pay alimony works out far smoother in the long run. But there is no denying that a punch is a much more satisfying short-term solution. Also, I'd just like to point out that there is a licensed Nintendo game with domestic violence in it! You can literally murder- Seriously, what is this? Isn't this kid g game for kids? In 1986, only kids would play this shit. Right? Games were not in that level that adults would play it, I guess. These games like this were for kids. You're giving kids a game with a domestic violence in it? What the fu- how, how did this even pass, Nintendo? Like, Nintendo didn't just put this shit out there, they would've checked the game, I don't know. Like, oh, fuck it, domestic violence, why not? Just punch your wife. It can't get worse than that, man, come on. Murder your wife and children! Literally murder your children! I think I need to repeat that. Literally murder your children! If the walls could talk. I just fucking said it can't get worse, and then he's talked about, you know, murdering the whole family. What the f- This is really dark, man. How is this a game? How did kids, when playing this, didn't get affected by this? They say really bad things about that guy. Now this is the point where most people, like 99% of people, would do this. Hmm. And a gun. Just Out shoot of this it. house! Out of this house! Spirit you demon be gone. gone. From this house. <laughs> but this isn't most people. This is Jontron. <laughs> to take on this challenge, I have to think like a salary man. Dress like one. Be one. Let's beat Takeshi at his own game, goddammit. You are not gonna believe this. This game requires an insane amount of trial and error. More than any sane person would be expected to undertake. For starters, you're supposed to ignore your boss at the beginning of the game because you want to pick up the bonus he gives you later. So you go directly to the bank and close out your account to withdraw the 50,000 yen that are in there. Then you go to the local culture club and use the money to buy... Shamisen lessons? Yeah, it sounds random, right? But you're supposed to do this because you actually have to start the game out by divorcing your wife. And when you do that, you have to pay her alimony. And that means that 75% of the money that you're holding on to at that given moment will go to her. And you need the money later or else you'll get stuck. You won't be able to beat the game. So basically, you're trying to give your wife as little money as possible. Man, who said, <laughs> who said chivalry's dead? The next steps are entirely steps made of logic. Quit job. Take money out of the office plant. Learn to hang glide. All the while managing to dodge Yakuza Tufts that are trying to beat the shit out of you as you moon jump past. And yeah, by the way, they're unavoidable! It doesn't matter how hard you try, unless you get lucky 10% of a time, they'll teleport to you and take a hit. Now normally in a video game, this would- so basically, anybody who played this game outside of Japan would be like, Oh, this is how the Japan is. You go there and all the, all the Yakuza is just walking around trying to punch you. Isn't that a great PR? It would be a problem, but for a majority of the time in this game, you can't replenish your hearts. And you only have four, which is not a lot, trust me. It's like the Yakuza are just a tax, a toll. Every time you pass one, they take a part of you with them. The more you play the game, the more you run the meter. Better use your time wisely. 
It's just an allegory. It's just an allegory of our inevitable demise. I'm slowly dying. I'm slowly dying just like him. Each obstacle makes an etching in my soul. Now this may seem very uh, cryptic and, and convoluted, but that's because you haven't heard the next part. You're then supposed to go to the pachinko parlor and buy 500 balls and lose them. Sir, you don't have enough balls. Okay, okay, first off, rude. But secondly, yes, I fucking do, because they won't. <laughs> Look, man, I don't care what the context is. You never say to any man that you don't have enough balls. You never say that. You, you use different type of term, right? You find different way of saying it. You don't say that out just directly like that. Go down! I keep winning balls. Yeah, the one time I want to lose at gambling, and I can't do it if I tried. Now, I don't know for sure what hell looks like, but I think it might be a bit like Takeshi's challenge. This is ridiculous! <laughs> Shut up, you dick! Supposed to, you're supposed to yell into the microphone on the second controller. <laughs> A bunch of Yakuza toughs fill into the parlor. And to beat this part, you have to knock out at least one of them, which is really hard because they all three pummel onto you really quickly and you die in seconds. Oh, and did I mention? Anytime you die in this game, you have to go to the beginning. And that means doing every single minute step all over oh, again. Oh, I bet 99% of people who played this game never finished it. Not just because of all the shit that this game has, it's just because of the things like this. As soon as you die, you go to the first fucking start, starting line basically. I can never get through that, like fuck that. After two or three tries, I'm like, I'm not playing this. Again. And by the time you beat this game, you can write a strategy guide on it, because you know it front to back. After you scare off the Yakuza from the parlor, the owner gives you a bunch of balls, which you use to buy a Shamisen. What even is- what even- what even is that? Okay, it's that. That's what it is. I get- okay, I mean, I guess I'm familiar, I just didn't know the name. Now we're off to the karaoke bar to sing the same song three times in a row, because Takeshi Kitano is an insane person. You yeah, actually seriously. have to sing into the microphone on the second controller, which is pretty innovative for its time, but it's incredibly difficult and precise. I'm not gonna lie, he probably was drunk when he decided to write things about this game. Because nobody, even with the slightest sanity, would ever put domestic violence and murdering of the family inside the-, the Kids game basically include this kind of a ridiculous challenges. Once All right, you've completed it. the songs, guess what happens? <laughs> yes, guess what? A bunch of yakuza storm into the bar, and you have to beat the shit out of all of them again on the same hearts. Then, just in the nick of time, an old man comes in and gives you a map. And then you beat the shit out of him. It's not even an option. You have to do that. But when you look at the map, of course, it's blank. To reveal it, you have to let it soak in water and wait five minutes, but not more than ten, and then cry into the microphone, or bathe it in sunlight and let the controller sit for an hour. Ah, arbitrary wait times. I feel like this is more like, you know, uh, Peter Griffin's uh, in mind than Takeshi's challenge. Peter Griffin for Family Guy. This is just ridiculous. Yeah, some old guy comes- yeah, I beat him too, why not? What do you know? It's an early MMO. Now that we've got our treasure map, I say it's off to the South Pacific. <laughs> you know, no, seriously, you head to the airport and board a plane for the South Pacific. You know, this only just dawned on me right now, but do you realize that this is a Nintendo game in which you quit your job, divorce your wife, and go treasure hunting? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100, best king, best king. When you get there, you get a gun. Well, getting the gun is kind of cool. I love this. See, this is what I was talking about. He learned Japanese words for this thing, basically. This 14 minute video. This is so good. Every time he does this shit, for one joke in and there, he puts a ridiculous amount of effort. I guess just because of the frustration this game is bringing, he did, did, decided to do that. Like, fuck this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to complain about this in Japanese, I guess. Cool, I guess. I, it actually works. It's not just a bait and switch. Only now can you sleep at the hotel and regain your hearts. Oh my god. It's beautiful. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. You know, for such a bad game, when I saw those seven hearts, I was happy. I guess it just shows that life's all about perspective. Okay, this next part. And in case this challenge was successful, right? I mean, it was successful. You just got joy. But then again, if somebody literally kidnaps you, waterboards you, tortures you ridiculously, stores you in basement somewhere, and after a month just, you know, brings you outside in the sunlight, you'd be same amount of happy. But that doesn't, I guess that's not better, is it? So this is equivalent of that. 
<laughs> this game is ridiculous. I can't believe something like this exists. I can't even stress enough. This is one of the hardest parts in any video game I've ever played. You have one shot at this flying segment where you have to shoot a revolver abreast a hang glider at giant dive bombing pigeons and UFOs. If you get hit once, you're dead. Oh game my God. over. And he you know what that mushrooms. means? Divorce your wife, sing the karaoke, question if it's ethical to eat Mormons, do the whole thing over eat again Mormons. just to have another go at this hang gliding segment. It could take you 20, 30 times before you get this. And it wouldn't- I bet he was drunk, I'm just telling you right now, because he just threw the Mormons there. Like, fuck it, eat Mormons. I know he didn't mean Mormons, but <laughs> that's just so funny, man. Even be so bad if you could fully control the hang glider. But once you drop altitude, the only way you can go back up is to hit one of these gusts of wind, which you can accidentally shoot and destroy. How never, does that Never work? in my life have I said, God damn it, I shot the wind again, and meant it. <laughs> and meant that. <laughs> Can you even fathom how hard this is? Was a human no, actually intended to be able to overcome this? After a while, it breaks you down. It just, the only thing that keeps you going is the thought of what's coming next, the, the thought of winning. You can't let him beat you. It was designed to beat you. And hey, you want to know how hard this game is? I started this review in 2012. Come on, I have to do this. I, I, I can't stop until I do this. Please, please. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, I made it. I did it. I got there. I got to the island. I'm there you finally go, here. Uh, what? I'm in the treasure cave. This is the final stretch. There's of course, more? they wouldn't give you a break either. There's literally enemies oozing from every crack of this cave. Talk about having some PTSD. You're looking at this while having flashbacks, having to do the goddamn fucking pigeon section again. It's a non stop barrage of scorpions, uh, amoebas, pirates, skeletons, and flame balls. I swear to God, I don't even think you could beat this segment if there wasn't a built in exploit to the game, which is if you pause the game and unpause it, all the enemies reset. And then, finally, you see it just out of the corner of your eye. Not everyone is created equal. Not in a racist way, I'm talking more about willpower. Sorry if you thought that was a racist <laughs> or sexist comment. Some are quicker I think he meant it as a YouTube creator, it's not a risk critical. And you know what, I kind of agree. Joltron is definitely better. <laughs> Make an excuse. This is just better. But we live in a world where if you don't decide to be the very best, someone will step up and be happy to take your place. Today we've scaled a new peak, and you know what? Views pretty good from up here. Takeshi, I beat your challenge. To the victor go the spoils. What do I win? Nothing. Amazing. Now fuck off. That's it. That, that, that's, that's all it is. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, and small at the just, end. His, his face in the corner. Fifth roll it. Just went through. Kitano sama. Watashi wa zutto anata no dai fan desu. Battle royale no anata ga honto ni suki desu. なぜ竹氏の挑戦状を作ったのですか この手紙は師匠箱あてです。どうか返信をください。これは師匠の一部ではありません。この撮影が終わったら本当に送付しに行きます。Oh, this is just perfect, sir. I, I can feel the passive aggressiveness right there. Oh, God. Seriously, man, this is ridiculous. I never would have thought something like this could exist, but look at that. I mean, it does just Takeshi's challenge, so I guess, you know, you have to be up for that. Around that time, where, where games were really, you know, created for challenge purposes. So, yeah, if it says Takeshi's challenge, of course, it's great. Great, great as in hard. All right, people, uh, if you like my Rick Sunday, subscribe. Check out the Rick Sunday, there's a link in the description. Check out the Castle Place with the Incards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.